Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for the 4th of July weekend, 2022. Hope you guys and gals are enjoying your long, probably well needed weekend. Um, I've got a lot to talk about this particular week because we just came off of the end of month, end of quarter, end of really the first half of the year. And we saw a massive amount of volatility, but a lot of key levels were tested and I want to say held. Some of them broke and, 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 and you know, I, I, got a, I got a lot to talk about. But before I get into that, I need to mention if you haven't tried out Forex Analytics, make sure you do so. It's only $1 for 10 days. Um, we did release a new mobile app. Uh, we had it in, in production um, probably over the last uh, couple of weeks, but we've been working on it for the last couple of, uh, last, well, we've had an app for like the last four or five years. And, uh, and we, we just pushed out the most recent iteration. That's included with your Forex Analytics subscription. Doesn't matter what, um, what version of Forex Analytics you're using. You could be using the premium version. You could be using the light version, which is only $19 a month. But uh, you get the full package and you get the app with that. So make sure you download it from the mobile, uh, the um, the uh, uh, Apple iTunes store or actually the Google Play store, blah, blah, blah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, so I just wanted to mention if you want to join one of the most uh, active trading communities, make sure you, uh, you try us out. Like I said, $1 for 10 days. Um, let's talk about this last week. Now, this last week, like I said, it was the end of month, end of quarter, and, um, and end of half year. So the first half of the year has passed us. And, and if you're looking at equities, it's been a rough um, first half of the year. You look at the S&P, uh, we're down you know, from the beginning of the year. Now, remember, we closed, uh, uh, we started the year, excuse me, right around the, the highs. And so we're down about 20, you know, 21, 20, 20% 20 really for, for, the, uh, for the year or for the half year, excuse me. Um, is that expected? I'd say, yeah. I mean, you got you got central banks, especially the Fed, that's actually reversed, you know, from going from quantitative easing to quantitative tightening. So, of course, you expect a down year and probably a severely down year. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're going to go down in one fail swoop. And and I still have an open target for the uh, head and shoulder pattern in the S and P. It'll come in around thirty three hundred. I assume at some point in the second half of the year we will be there. However. We are starting to see the market stabilize, at least at current levels. And, um, you know, this might provide some buying opportunities for some risk assets as we are, you know, holding channel support in the S&P. We're near some pretty key Fibonacci levels. If you look at longer term, and let me take you over to the weekly chart and take you to the post-COVID lows. So you, you can see right here from a Fibonacci standpoint, uh, we're at the 38% retracement. We, we probed through it a couple of weeks back. Uh, but we're consolidating above that. And like I said, it's it's channel support. So I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some recovery in the stock market, maybe closer to 4,000, maybe 4,100 um, in, the, in the coming weeks ahead. Uh, we haven't seen any massive short squeeze. And one of the things that when you're in a bear market, like the market that we're in right now, one of the things that uh, that we tend to get in bear markets are very aggressive short squeezes. They don't they don't necessarily change the course of the market. We stay in a bear market, but there is a risk whenever you're down, um, down and out, kind of like this, that you get a you get a significant rally, and it's sharp and it's fast. It may only last a few days. It may only last a, a week or two, but there is that risk. I, I think any any move up towards channel resistance in the S and P, which would be up around at this point in time around 43, 43, 50 or the 200 day moving average is gonna find some sellers, but we're long ways away from there and I don't expect us to be there anytime in the next, well, by the time we have the next week ahead video, <laughs> I don't expect us to be there. Um, but uh, let's talk about what's happening in currencies and and really what's happening in the markets in general because this has been a very, it, it's been a very busy week, but next week is gonna be an extra busy week because it's gonna be a shortened week. We're gonna have the ISM services number. We're also gonna have the employment data out of the US um, and we're gonna get employment data out of Canada as well. We also will get um, you know, jolts, jobs numbers, so a lot of employment data coming through the, the, the ADP numbers. Um, but we also have actually on Monday, we have the Australian RBA decision. So if you're 
out enjoying on uh, <laughs> Fourth of July that evening. And uh, it's going to be late at night if you're on the East Coast. But if you're on the West Coast, you know, it's still going to be at 930 at night. If you had a few beers, be a little careful because the RBA will be meeting. And I want to give you a longer term view of the Aussie dollar. And most of you that listen to our daily face show or the flow show, you already know that our outlook on the Aussie dollar, this is a longer term outlook. But um, let me stop here for a moment. Let me mention a couple of things before I get back into the charts. Uh, we do offer two free training shows every single day. They're training, trading shows. We, we, we tell you how, how we're feeling about the markets, what you're, what you're seeing there, um, you know, the, how to prepare for your trading day, what's moving the markets at that moment. Um, we have the flow show that is early in the morning. It's at, it's at 5.30 a.m. Eastern every day. And that's going to actually be broadcasting, just so you know, it's going to be broadcasting on the 4th of July. So because I know uh, most of you in Europe or in Asia, you're not celebrating America's birthday, not like we are. So uh, we will still have that European uh, flow show, but the face show will not be broadcasting on Monday, but we'll resume broadcasting Tuesday through Friday. And if you want to register for those, they are free. Um, you can you can log in and listen to those. Uh, they're 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 great, and um, those are hosted by Eight Cap. Uh, so make sure you uh, check those out. All right, going back to the markets, going back to uh, the Aussie dollar. So. Most of you know that the Aussie dollar, I feel, is in a longer term inverted head and shoulder pattern. Now, if you think about this from like a, uh, a, a, a time perspective and, you know, having some sort of symmetry, you're talking about building the right shoulder of an inverted head and shoulder pattern. You're talking about building that <clears throat> over the course of the next couple of years. The, the, you know, if, if both sides are equal, roughly, you're talking about another at least another year, year and a half of building out a right shoulder. The, the point of where we're at though, is that we're, we're at a 50% retracement longer term. So let me take this little, this little uh, tip where I think is a generational low. You go to these highs right here. You'll notice that we are at the 50% retracement on a long-term basis. Now that's on a Fibonacci level. That's just a 50% a, a of that move. We've retraced it. So Naturally, uh, being that we're, it's really close to the left shoulder, we might find some support around here. And we see evidence of that on the daily chart. If you go over to the daily chart, you'll notice that spike low that came at the very end of this week, we actually found some buying uh, down below 68 cents and it took us all the way back to 68.16. Now, we did theoretically still close and break down territory, but I think we need to watch price action following the RBA on Monday night at 12.30 p.m. <laughs> Eastern, or it's 9.30 p.m. Uh, uh, if you're, if you're um, um, uh, in the, in the, in, in, on the West Coast, excuse me. So anyway, watch the Aussie dollar because you'll, you'll notice that we have hit new lows, but as we hit new lows in price, relative strength is divergent, which suggests that, that we could get a bounce. Now, if the RBA is more hawkish than expected and they raise rates by, uh, the market's expecting them to raise rates by a half a percent or 50 basis points. Um, I, I think that's kind of aggressive, but it depends. You could also have a, a hike that is hawkish. You know, you could have a hike that's not quite half of percent, but Maybe the RBA sets the pace that they're going to continue at this certain pace for, for a period of time with no foreseen cap. You know, things like that could, could cause some sort of rally in the Aussie. So watch the Aussie. It's going to be very important Monday night. I know it's uh, 4th of July, but it's going to be Monday night, um, late, late at night. If you're on the East Coast and obviously if you're in Europe, you're going to wake up to see what has happened in the Aussie dollar. Um, and in Asia, I'm sure you're going to be trading around it. But it's not just the Aussie. Uh, and by the way, I, I want to point this out. This is a uh, longer term channel, just so you know that if you extend these highs here, looks like this. You have pretty much a, a, a channel here, right? So you'll see that nice little channel has been, been developed over the course of the last 
well, since uh, March of last year of 2021. So we have over a year of a, a descending channel. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a rally and, you know, and a, and a move back above 69 cents going into this next week, especially if the RBA is hawkish. Um, also, one of the other things that's going to help the Aussie dollar going into next week is how well do stocks perform? The Aussie dollar has been beat down quite substantially because of the mood, move that you've seen in copper. Let me pull up the copper chart really quick. Okay, just uh, I'll pull up a uh, you know copper futures chart. You can kind of see what's happening in copper. Copper's just been, gotten demolished, but you know are we at some fairly decent support here? My uh, my argument would say yes, we are because uh, we're I think we're in between fib levels here. Let me go ahead and double check that. No, we're at the 38% retracement of, of copper. Uh, also. If I'm not mistaken, you know, we're just past 161% extension of that move, but you'll notice that it's very oversold. So if copper gets some sort of support and you see the Aussie get a little bit of support, well, that's going to, yeah, or excuse me, and the S&P get a little bit of support or stocks in general, that's going to help your Aussie dollar as well. Um, I want to turn your attention now to the Euro. The Euro has been uh, forming, and let me get rid of this really quick. Uh, that was from last week's analysis. Um, what you'll, uh, what you'll see here is we are forming a wedge. Now, this could be a wedge. You could look at it as a triple bottom, considering the fact that we've hit all the, these three lows. I consider it a wedge right now, which is actually a bearish wedge. When I say bearish wedge, the reason why it's bearish is because you have consistent lows and lower highs. When you have consistent lows and lower highs, what that actually means is that is a bearish wedge and the risk at this point is tilted to the bearish side. So if I had to throw a percent on it, I'd say, you know, 60, 65 percent chance of moving lower and breaking lower and maybe 40, 35 percent chance of breaking higher. Um, those are not um, I'm not a statistician, so I'm not going to say that that's, you know, a, a, those are perfect, uh, the perfect um, uh, equations. But, you know, based on my experience of over 25 years of trading, it's about the number that I look at is around 60, 65 percent chance of it breaking down. That means there is still an opportunity for it to break higher. Like I said, a lot of traders might be looking at this as a double, triple bottom. The one thing I do need to point out is the euro is held up very well despite the move lower in risk. Now, I, I wouldn't get really bullish the Aussie dollar unless you got back above 108, but look, we could be in a longer term channel and we're just at channel support. That's another way to be looking at the Aussie dollar as well. I, I do know this, that if we do get a solid break below the 103 and a quarter level, the 103.30, that's going to be a very bearish event for the Aussie. But if we get close to it, that also could provide you a good risk reward to be on the long side because you know your risk, it's managed. And as a trader, the, the most important thing for, that we can always identify, what is our risk? Well, if I'm getting long down here, you know, near support, I know my risk is somewhere down here, then you know my reward is going to be somewhere up around channel highs. I know my risk reward. That's a, that's a great way uh, as a trader to always know where your, your risk is, is looking at technical charts just like this. And the euro is providing that. Now, we know also <clears throat> that the euro dollar uh, would be really bullish if we broke above this resistance, which comes in at 106.30, 106.20, but also the trend line that comes in roughly right now about 105.70, 105.60. One of the things that, you know, is always gnawing at, at me in the back of my mind is that, uh, you know, the ECB has been quite dovish to the hawkish uh, uh, FOMC or relatively hawkish, at least, you know, uh, relatively speaking, uh, you know, comparing the two central banks. Uh, Europe continues to have an inflation problem. And if the ECB decides they want to turn towards inflation and start really fighting it with a more hawkish stance on monetary policy, uh, even to sacrifice growth or po possibly put Europe in a recession, they may have to do that. And if the ECB does that and the Fed, uh, we are already hawkish as far as expectations go. If the Fed you know, just stays pat or maybe they even become a little bit more dovish as US economic data starts to weaken, which we'll talk about here in a second, then you would see that that uh, that shift tilt towards the ECB, and that means that would influence the euro dollar higher. So that's what you always have to be on the look lookout for when you're dealing with the euro specifically. Um, are we going to get any indication of that? Not this week, I don't think so. There's no uh, scheduled. Uh, well, I guess we do see uh, Chris, uh, Christine Lagarde 
uh, the, the ECB president. She is actually speaking on Friday. Uh, I don't know how important that speech is going to be, but it's something we should take note of. But what's going to be important this week is the economic data. So let's talk a little bit about the economic data that we are dealing with going into this next week. Now, there's there's a there's an ongoing debate that um, data uh, does or does not matter. What's really interesting is if if you watched Friday, um, the PCE data that came out on Friday uh, as, as the market was uh, as the market was wrapping its week up. Um, the PCE data came in a little weaker than expected. When it came in a little weaker than expected, what happened is the dollar went, the dollar went lower, excuse me, because it was weaker data, right? The dollar, as soon as that data came out, I'm gonna take you over to the dollar index really quick. As soon as that data came out, um, you know, we, we saw a reversal of the dollar, the dollar uh, trended lower for the remainder of the day. Uh, when that happened, also the S&P hit a bottom and started to rally. Now you can say that was flow related because it was the first day of the month, the first day of the quarter, the first day of the half year. Blame it on that if you want. But what happened as soon as that data came out, we saw the knee jerk reaction when the data was released. Follow my words here. When the data was released, the knee jerk reaction was bad data, stocks went higher, dollar went lower. Now, we saw a little jostling around for the next hour, and then eventually the dollar started to trend lower, stocks started to trend higher. Again, blame it on whatever you want to blame it on. The one thing that I want to point out is the knee-jerk reaction is what suggests to me that we are getting to that point, that we are starting to see data work in that matter, meaning bad data is bad for the dollar, but good for stocks, okay? As you know, you get into a, 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 a situation where the central bank is going to be more influenced by economic data. That's where the, the, the mind of the market is probably moving towards. Are we 100% there yet? I don't think so. I don't think there's like a flick on switch where you just click it on like a light bulb and turn it off like a light bulb. I don't believe that's the case, but I do believe we're getting close. And just by watching the price action, when that data is released, that's suggesting that the market is starting to pay very close attention to the data. Because if you look at inflation, which we haven't seen inflation come down yet, but if you look at commodities, commodities are coming down. Crude oil has been coming off of its highs. Copper has been coming down. Gold's been coming down. We'll talk about gold here in a second. But all of this is suggesting that the market is starting to lean towards that if the economic data starts to weaken, especially when you're talking about the jobs data, the employment data, which we'll be getting this next week, if that data starts to come in weak, my opinion is you're going to start to see stocks act appropriately because they're going to believe that the Fed may start to lay off some of this hawkish talk and you're going to see the dollar come down substantially off of um, its highs. And so that's, uh, that's my view with the, the dollar. We'll, we're going we're gonna to see as, uh, as time goes on. But I, like I said, I don't believe it's a switch that gets flicked. But just watching the price action and seeing how the market reacts right when that data comes out, I think is a good indication for us to, to, be, to be thinking and kind of leaning towards in the days and weeks ahead, which is obviously very important with this week with uh, non-farm payrolls. Now, I want, last thing I want to talk about you know, you're discussing the dollar or I'm discussing the dollar. I want to discuss that, that we've had the dollar dollar show us a false breakout. Let me just show you this right here. We had a false breakout from a couple of weeks back that brought us some selling. Now, if you look on an intraday basis, you know, the dollar didn't quite make new highs, but notice how we're making new highs and then reversing. We make new highs and we reverse. We make new highs and reverse. At some point, that's going to give way to some selling pressure. So I'm not bearish the dollar just yet, but we're noticing lower highs are being created and highs are being sold. So people are selling into strength. That usually is a suggestion or an indication, excuse me, that we are getting close to a turning point in the US dollar. Keep that in mind as we go into non-farm payroll week this week. Last thing that I wanted to cover is gold. Um, because if you want to talk about the dollar, you've got to talk a little bit about gold. One of the best inverse relationships right now and has been is, hey, as the dollar goes higher, gold goes lower. And that's been no, um, uh, 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 if, you're, if you're a gold bull, that's been tough, right? You, you, every time you think gold's going to get a little, uh, little bounce, the dollar starts to rally, 
gold succumbs to selling pressure, and that's been the case. Now, I want, I want to take you all the way back uh, to uh, the, the spike lows following the COVID lockdowns. Actually, take that back. I'm sorry. I'm going to take you to the spike lows in August of 2021. That's the number I wanted to look at. Take that spike low there. Excuse me. Um, if you draw it through these lows right here in May of this, this year, through these lows right here back in uh, earlier uh, last month, what you'll notice is we punctured through all of these lows on the Friday at the very end of the week. We went through those lows. We broke through that low. We broke through even this low and we've reversed back up to that trend line. Now it's a little early here, but my suggestion is if you're trading dollar related products, keep an eye on gold. Because if gold starts to catch a bid and we start to see gold trade back above, let's say 1820 and especially 1850, you know, right around here, which you'll see the 200 day moving average is right around that level. You start trading around this, uh, you know, 1850, uh, 1860 level, you start to see gold break out in that direction. Um, I think that would be a bullish indication that, you know, we had some false breakdowns and we're seeing some reversals and gold might be heading higher. Now, if you see gold move higher like that, my two cents would be that the dollar starts to trend lower as a strong correlation. And uh, so I, th I think that's something that you should be paying attention to. Uh, one of the last things I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out the Trader Funding Program, make sure you do so. The Trader Funding Program is a good way for you as a trader to trade our money. Uh, you don't have to risk your own money and you can keep 75% of the profits. Um, there is a process through this, so check it out. It's called the Trader Funding Program. And if you think you're a good trader and you just don't want to, uh, you don't want to, you know, trade your own money and risk your own money, or let's say you don't have access to larger trading accounts, check out the Trader Funding Program. See if it's right for you. There's a two-minute explainer video right at the very bottom. You can also get to a link at the bottom of this uh, video if you're watching us on YouTube. Speaking of which, if you're watching us on YouTube and you like the video, give my team a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these week ahead videos. And also, if you're in the United States, happy birthday, America. If you're not, enjoy a nice three-day, little elongated weekend with less volatility. Have a great one, and I'll talk to you next week. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.